So hello, everyone. My name is Julie Hoy. I'm a presidential postdoc at the University of Michigan School of Information. And in the fall, I will be transitioning to be an assistant professor here. I'm excited to present our work, Community Collectives Low-Tech Social Support for Digitally Engaged Entrepreneurship. Uh, I'll be presenting this work on behalf of my co-authors, um, which include our community partners, Nefra Barber, Wendy Casey, Suzanne Klieg, Danny Dolly, and Francis Worthy, as well as my UMSI colleagues, Kentaro Toyama and Tawana Dillahunt. And we are thrilled that this study has received an honorable mention award. So I'm moving on to the next slide. One of the reasons we focus on digitally engaged entrepreneurship was that we see this individualized way of working, lauded and growing narratives around entrepreneurship on digital platforms. Gig work platforms like Uber are marketing themselves as gateways to entrepreneurship by highlighting inspirational stories of drivers who leverage their flexible schedules to build a business. Similarly, platforms like Facebook have pledged to train business owners with the digital skills needed to compete in today's workplace. Yet there is competing evidence of whether digital platforms are actually supporting self-directed work uh, through entrepreneurship effectively and equitably. So scholars studying entrepreneurialization of work describe how workers are feeling the pressure to take on increasing responsibility and risk. While this previous research has primarily focused on tech entrepreneurs or more middle-class populations, our work uncovers how these pressures disproportionately affect those in more precarious conditions where there are limited safety nets, resources, and agency. Uh, how are the slides now? Are we on necessity-driven entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurialism in the digital age. It just switched to necessity okay. driven entrepreneurship. Great. Yeah. So understanding this population is important because an overwhelming number of self-proclaimed entrepreneurs in the United States fall in this category of being more necessity driven. Oftentimes these efforts are considered side hustles or informal businesses uh, with typically less than five employees and primarily employing family members and locals. Uh, which brings us to our research question. How do we foster sustainable structures for digitally engaged entrepreneurship in under-resourced communities? And I just wanna point out that the term under-resourced was chosen by our uh, co-authors when they were asked uh, what they wanted the socioeconomic status of their community to be described as. And so we'll be using this term throughout the presentation. So to answer this question, we took a participatory action research approach in which we partnered with a local nonprofit. Uh, and together with the community members, we co-led meetings about one to two times per month for about two years. And as per participatory action research, this interaction meant that the university team and community members actively participated in the research outcomes through an iterative process of planning, acting, and reflecting. So in planning, this meant identifying local goals with the nonprofit members uh, and community partners, revisiting goals with everyone throughout, setting individual goals and timelines. And so this involved an extensive upfront work in setting up the partnership, which meant having multiple conversations to build trust and understand uh, what everyone wanted to get out. Uh, in acting, we developed meeting structures together, shared ideas and resources, and collectively troubleshooted barriers. And once we agreed on these shared goals and plan of action, we also uh, engaged in reflection. So this included conversations on university and community engagement and reflecting on personal goals and progress. And so during analysis, this also involved regular discussions with community partners to make sure that the findings that uh, were coming out of the analysis reflected their experiences. So some Key findings that came out of the study were that digital platforms meant to democratize entrepreneurship often assumed basic access to resources such as transportation and that low tech social supports are critical for supporting early stage business progress online and offline.
So take, for example, some of our uh, members' efforts to join Airbnb experiences. And for those of you who are not familiar with Airbnb experiences, uh, it's like a, an offshoot of Airbnb where people, instead of uh, renting out rooms in their homes, they take people on tours or teach them how to cook certain things, um, so more experience-based things. And so two members were interested in marketing a cooking class. And what we saw was that not everyone had the certain resources, like having access to a space, which created barriers to participation on these platforms that were supposed to be meant uh, for any, everybody. So in one of the meetings, we note, uh, noticed collectively negotiating technology use. So Barbara said, I couldn't figure out what to do with the expensive venue and the 20% Airbnb overhead. That's a lot. I looked at Airbnb experiences around the country and they all had their own storefronts. And Casey said, so they had everything already set up. And Barbara responded, but I don't have that, the storefront. If you don't have all that set up, it'll be over $100 to rent a space. And Casey said, what about schools with cooking programs? And then Suzanne, another member said, my friend said she could use her space at this location. And so we see that regular in-person meetings are critical in troubleshooting these challenges, allowing people to collectively identify ideas and pool resources needed to participate online. We also saw the importance of paper-based supports in motivating online engagement. So community members were on the whole comfortable typing on their computer, phone, or tablet and using the internet but they reported that they felt documenting their drafts directly onto these technologies like Facebook seemed to be too official. They wanted to keep their brainstorming unpublished on paper and preferred transferring their written words to digital platforms only after their thoughts were organized on paper where they were more comfortable. So in response, we created worksheets mimicking how people were already using their uh, paper planning um, for their tours which help people organize their thoughts according to what was needed for creating an online business page, like say a Facebook page. And so this also scaffolded planning and action activity for other members who are having trouble just getting started with thinking through their ideas. So on the left, you can see an example of a worksheet that was developed and used, and on the right, how um, content from that worksheet informed their description on their own Facebook page. Huh? Okay. Together, we identified four core elements critical to supporting the onboarding process of digitally engaged entrepreneurship, including, can you hear me? My internet says it's bad. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, resource connecting organizations, regular in-person meetings, paper planning tools, and practice and validation. So if we really want to support equitable engagement on these platforms, we really need to broaden an idea of what a support system looks like. It doesn't just mean providing people with the digital tools that they need to succeed, like online tutorials or MOOCs, but also providing local, local social supports, like scaffolding in-person meetups to engage with peers and experts and partnering with existing local organizations. And so while these individual elements may not sound particularly groundbreaking, Fostering an ecosystem of support provides multiple pathways at different levels of formality to help those in under-resourced contexts get started. To give an example of uh, this getting started through the current entrepreneurship ecosystem in the neighborhood, uh, one person, Casey, said, not everyone is ready to make that prosperous commitment. They need to flesh out their idea first. Sometimes you don't have people to talk things through. My family has a deaf ear to my ideas, but here I have people to talk to and maybe it's a great idea. So in this quote, she talks about Prosperous, which is a local entrepreneur training program meant to support uh, beginners. But in order to participate, one needs to have a fleshed out idea and description, which already takes a significant amount of upfront work, uh, which uh, needs to be developed first. And so, these kind of informal meetings kind of help people to think through these ideas before they enter into these other support systems. In reflecting on this process of working with communities, we initially found in what was important were general principles stated in previous work, such as uh, building trusting relationships with local organizations, being transparent about your motivations, 
and regularly revisiting the relationship to make sure that everyone is getting what they want out of it. Um, but also, if I had to distill how I spent much of my time, it was understanding and moderating conversations within the community to understand shared goals and motivations. So within a neighborhood, there's not as always a cohesive vision of what people hope have to get out of the relationship. So this meant moderating discussions, having one-on-one -on -one, um, conversations with people to figure out common interests. Finally, one of our key commitments was making sure that there were ongoing structures to sustain these efforts. Uh, some steps that we have taken to sustain this group with, uh, without researchers' support in the future is uh, having leaders elected within the community. So while we initially did a lot of the meeting coordination when this project started, now local leaders have been elected to take on these responsibilities, such as being the meeting coordinators, or managing publicity on behalf of the group. We also co-authored a local grant with a nonprofit partner, which helped pay for needed resources like transportation, as well as paying uh, the time for the leaders that have been elected that is meant to be put into organizing as it um, takes time out of their day. We also uh, co-created a mission and vision statement for the group, which will be used to help recruit future members. And some of them have developed ongoing partnerships with local organizations, such as museums or nonprofits, which allows them to build up individual reputations as entrepreneurs. So to summarize again, this participatory action research approach to support digitally engaged entrepreneurship led us to find that digital platforms meant to democratize entrepreneurship often assumed basic access to resources, such as available space and transportation, and that local uh, low-tech social supports were critical for supporting early stage business programs, uh, progress online and offline. So this meant like paper-based worksheets and regular in-person meetings. Uh, after this project, we have come away with even more questions around how to par participate, uh, perform participatory action research more broadly, and how do you involve community members in this whole research process? So uh, some questions that we hope to continue to explore include, how can we engage ecosystems with beyond the research or community partnership to ensure project sustainability? What conversations need to be had before and during the research partnership to ensure community agency? And how can we ensure community participation in the research and design process? And so we're excited to work together with the community partners as we move forward to address some of these. So I would like to thank my collaborators from both inside and outside academia in contributing to these projects, as well as the Eastside Community Network for sharing their space and their network, as well as uh, sources of funding, which includes the School of Information, Ginsburg Center, uh, NSF, and the Eastside Community Network. And I look forward to your questions.